The idea of a modern, new freeway has become very divisive, with some states continuing with the idea that new highways will improve traffic in their states and are worth the money and effort, with others halting any future plans due to environmental concerns and public backlash. Places like North Carolina and Texas have had no problem with the idea of building new highways, and these states have new interstates in the works. Something that I've found is that usually places in the South are more on board with new interstates, maybe due to political reasons, or maybe due to the growth being experienced in these states, putting them behind an infrastructure. Today we move back to the South to talk about another future interstate project, this time I-49, a planned route that would run from the lower Midwest into the Deep South, connecting a more central route in the country and greatly helping three states. Before we get into the video though, I want to quickly ask if you would please consider subscribing to the channel. We make geography content like this every week, so if that's the kind of thing you enjoy watching on YouTube, I highly recommend you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future uploads. Growth has slowed on the channel, so if you wouldn't mind just clicking the subscribe button if you haven't already, that would really help me out. Thank you! So in previous videos, we've talked about the mega interstate I-14 that would stretch across the southern U.S serving five states and creating a large and important route across these states. In another, we talked about the freeway boom in North Carolina, with the state continuing on several projects in suburban and rural areas to expand their freeway and interstate system, beltways around cities, hurricane evacuation routes, and more. So today we continue talking about the southern U.S., instead focusing on one route that stretches between three states, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Missouri. This would be I-49. So to start out, let's go over the current route of this interstate with the built portions. Currently, around two-thirds of the route have been completed, with the only state of the three to fully complete its project being Missouri. So let's start there. The northern terminus is in the southern part of the Kansas City metro at a large and complicated five-way interchange with I-435, US-71, and I-470. From there, it works its way south through the suburbs of Grandview, Belton, and Raymore, and 10 miles later hits Harrisonville. After this, it takes a turn straight south. The next 100 miles of the route are relatively rural as it goes through an emptier part of Missouri, but it then comes into the Joplin metro where it bypasses Carthage before meeting up with I-44 and jogging to the west and coming back out at an interchange still southeast of Joplin where it continues south. This means it doesn't really go into Joplin and barely serves the metro on a larger scale if you don't include the business route which goes into Webb City. After that, it continues south into the Bella Vista Bypass, which we'll talk about more later because it affected the route greatly, taking it around a large touristy community before going into the Northwest Arkansas and the Fayetteville, Springdale, Rogers, Bentonville metropolitan area thing. There, it serves as the only interstate route passing by every city mostly to the west, besides Bentonville, which it's located to the east of. After Fayetteville, it moves down through the heart of the Ozark Mountains for around 40 miles, before it ends northeast of the Fort Smith metropolitan area. In the Fort Smith metro, there's actually another small disconnected portion of the highway running from Arkansas 255 to US 71 for around 6 miles. This is a built roadway in an area ready for construction, and the highway will obviously be continued at a later date, but for now it does look very out of place. So that's where we end the northern part of the highway, and to find the southern segment, we have to move south around 121 miles to the Texarkana metropolitan area at the point that I-49 picks back up again and continues to move to the south. We start at the border between Arkansas and Texas, north of the city instead of through it. From there, I-49 runs along the beltway around the city before coming out at State Route 151 in the southern part of the metro. After Texarkana, it takes a pretty simple route, following the Red River past the state line into Louisiana. Now in our last state, Louisiana, the highway first hits Shreveport, one of the large metros along its route. Now in the city, I-49 actually hasn't been finished, and we'll get to talking about that construction later on. But what matters is that there is an around 4 mile gap where I-49 just isn't there. But it then continues just south of the downtown. Going through the metro, it then works its way out of the beltway and down the path of the Red River yet again. Next it passes straight through Alexandria, actually taking a quite destructive route just southwest of the downtown, splitting the city. 
But looking past that, I-49 finally goes away from the Red River and continues south into its last city, Lafayette. Lafayette's actually a very interesting area that I would love to talk about more at some point, but for now we can just say that I-49 ends north of the city where it meets I-10, ending the current 528 mile route. So now that we've given an overview of the highway in its current state, let's go over the history of this project and how it got to look like this, disconnected and unfinished. So moving back to the 1970s, we find the real idea of I-49 with some business leaders and highway officials in the three states. In this time, they were discussing a new interstate that would connect the Gulf Coast all the way up to Canada. The goal here was to ease congestion and attract more commerce from businesses seeking to locate or expand into communities nearby an interstate highway. In the mid-1970s, the Federal Highway Administration approved a 212-mile interstate in Louisiana that would connect the cities of Lafayette and Shreveport, following the Red River through the west part of the state. The first 32-mile segment was completed in 1984, becoming the first part of I-49 to be finished and opened. So Louisiana acted the quickest, but the idea was still very real to the other states. Missouri and Arkansas worked to improve the US-71 corridor to achieve interstate highway standards in its future, which contributed to the completing of this highway. Moving into the 2000s, Arkansas was finishing up the route between Bentonville and Fort Smith through the Ozarks, which became known as I-540 for the time being, but eventually became I-49. In Missouri, the early 2000s was used to upgrade the route between Joplin and Harrisonville into Kansas City up to interstate standards. And when all construction was completed in Missouri, the I-49 designation was given in December 2012. Now the main spot that needed to be focused on was from Fort Smith to the Arkansas-Missouri state line. As I said, this was currently I-540, with there being one major thing holding it back from the I-49 designation, Bella Vista. So Bella Vista is a summer resort city with lots of lakeside property and second homes. It's a very high-end community with influential residents. Obviously, they didn't want I-49 passing straight through their city, so it was forced to bypass Bella Vista. And the project was called the Bella Vista Bypass, obviously. So this bypass was a very recent project, starting in 2010 and being one of the biggest steps for the route. Construction actually went fairly well with there being no insane delays on the large project. So in October 2021, the Bella Vista Bypass was finished in Arkansas and Missouri, going around the large community and really sending forward the I-49 corridor project. So now you know exactly where I-49 is at, and we can go into the future plans and see if these states have the ability to fully complete the project. Starting in the north, we have the Kansas City Metro. Now at its northern terminus, it looks done. There's a large interchange with other interstate highways, the city is where it's supposed to end anyways, and it would be going straight into the central city if not. But why wouldn't it? Well, it turns into US-71 past the interchange, which happens to be a freeway for most of its route, and there's only three intersections holding it back. 71st Street, 59th Street, and 55th Street. Now the main thing you see when you look at these intersections is that they would be very easy to get rid of if you wanted to turn them into real interchanges. Just push the highway closer together and bridge it over or under. Now why would you do this? Well, all three of these intersections are ranked within the top 10 most dangerous intersections in Kansas City at number 9, 6, and 4 respectively. Now if you were to connect it into the downtown though, it would bring up a quick problem that I wanted to talk about. I-49 would meet up with I-29, an interstate that runs from Kansas City to the Canadian border. Why wasn't that the plan the whole time? They could make another interstate that crosses the country north to south, but instead they just changed the number by 20. I think if they connected the two routes, it would be such an easy change. But because of the already annoying process that went into naming the highway, I wouldn't expect anything. Anyways, this stretch of highway will likely never be completed due to public objection within the city and currently there just isn't enough popularity to get the project off the ground. Moving south to our next stretch of unfinished freeway, we have the area within the Fort Smith Metro. Now there's this 11 mile stretch of highway that still needs to be connected in the city, going through a growing group of communities, meaning it will only get harder to complete in the future. 
Currently, they are just starting work on it, with the project costing around $800 million, almost half of which would be going into the bridge to cross the Arkansas River. The project is set to start in early 2024 and will last up to six years, so at least we have a timeline there. The bigger worry is the near 180-mile stretch of unfinished highway between Fort Smith and Texarkana. Currently, it remains largely incomplete, so the easy parts have been finished. Right-of-way has been acquired, and engineering has been completed. But with the project needing around $2.5 billion, it currently lacks any sort of funding that would get it off the ground. Sadly, that's pretty much all the info out there on the longest stretch of fully incompleted highway, meaning that this should be the main place holding this route back in the future. With such a large segment of rural highway not built through incredibly challenging terrain, there's no world where this would be finished within the next 15 years. It really depends when they get funding and start the project. So moving into probably the most important state here, we have Louisiana. So immediately near the north end, we have Shreveport, which does not make things easy for the highway. Remember when we mentioned the gap in I-49 in the city? Well, that gap needs to be filled, obviously. So there's two options. Option one is the inner city connector a three and a half mile direct connection between the already completed portions of I-49. This would take the highway straight through downtown Shreveport and right into the city, requiring the destruction of a large stretch of land in the city. Now, it wouldn't be catastrophic for Shreveport, but let's look at these neighborhoods. Yeah, they aren't great or rich or anything, but there's obviously still people living there and it isn't abandoned. So it would require the relocation of a lot of people which is not a very popular idea at this point in history. The other option would be not building any new highway, and instead taking I-49 around the city on the current route of I-220 and State Route 3132. This would be very easy and wouldn't cause any problems for anyone. So it really just depends on if the city wants I-49 to be constructed or if they want to scrap that idea. It was obviously the plan for these two routes to connect to each other, but that wouldn't be an easy task. After Shreveport, we move to the next future corridor of I-49. This time, probably the most talked about area, which would be south of Lafayette, connecting into New Orleans. So the plan for I-49 is to follow the US-90 corridor through the swampy Atchafalaya Delta, through New Iberia into Morgan City, before crossing into Homa and Thibodeau. From there, it would pass Raceland and again cross through some swampy area before finally finding its way into New Orleans and ending at I-10. So how are they progressing on it? Well, the first place to worry about is through Lafayette. In the city, US-90 passes right through the downtown, and turning this into a freeway would not be feasible. Or would it? The current plan is for the Lafayette connector to run right through the downtown upgrading US-90 in the city to interstate standards. The good news is that it would run through a minimal residential area and would be able to cut through the city without completely destroying it. But as you'd expect, construction has been delayed many times due to local opposition, with the most recent attempt being halted in early 2023. Moving south from the downtown connector, a six and eight lane elevated freeway through the suburbs has officially started as of November 2022. From New Iberia and southeast for the next 37 miles, the highway is actually already fully up to interstate standards, being listed under High Priority Corridor 37. The next seven miles between Calumet and Bayou Vista, it's just a divided expressway with at-grade intersections. Currently, an environmental study is ongoing to expand that segment to interstate standards, but I could see that being constructed in the near future. Moving into Morgan City, US-90 again goes back to interstate standards, being elevated through the city over the Atchafalaya River before going through some rural swampy land. After it's through this area, it continues through Homa and Thibodeau into Raceland. In Raceland, US-90 goes back to an expressway with at-grade intersection. The first plan was for a fully elevated highway through the swamplands southwest of New Orleans, which was approved in 2008. But due to budget concerns, the plan was changed and it was decided I-49 would continue to just follow the US-90 corridor, with most of the highway being upgraded to interstate standards, other than bypasses of Des Almonds and its surrounding communities. This study was launched in 2014, 
and currently there's still an ongoing supplemental EIS to finalize these changes. After that, the plan is for it to continue to follow US-90 into New Orleans, staying on the southern side of the Mississippi River on Business 90. This would require around 3.5 miles of urban freeway to be constructed, as well as 14 miles of more suburban and rural upgrades to US-90. Currently, there's no approved plan for when it will be constructed, but there are future I-49 signs all over, so it's obviously in the works. But that's all we have for the plan of I-49. I don't see it being completed anytime soon, but every portion of incomplete freeway does have some sort of plan to be built. So the future is actually a lot brighter for I-49 than a lot of other projects in the country that have been halted for decades. Finally, I did want to go over the final total for pricing on this, because obviously that plays a massive role in when and how this will get done, with the pricing needed to be justified for it to get built. In Missouri, $350 million have been spent on I-49 since it started in the state back in 1994, with another $50 million worth of projects being completed recently or still being worked on. Arkansas has already completed over $1 billion worth of projects related to the highway, but the state still has so much to go, with well over 100 miles of highway yet to even be started. These future plans will bump up the total anywhere from $2.5 to $3 billion making the grand estimate in the state around $4 billion. Finally, there's the biggest one, which is Louisiana. This is a state that seems to care the most about I-49 right now, and with $1.2 billion being spent already, there's anywhere from $5 to $7 billion worth of projects still being worked on. With all of this added up, that would mean I-49 could end up costing over $12 billion between the three states. So finally, our detailed look at I-49 comes to an end. I can absolutely see this interstate being completed in the future, and most of us will hopefully see the full route being opened within our lifetimes. Thanks for watching. Thank you to the members this week, Karen Hudson 81, Dominic Psyche, Sturfels, Rosebud 4, KMS162, Jeremy Jarvis, Haystack, Boss King Inc., Blang, Christopher DeAngelis, JL, Darkbird, Elijah Pass, Big Pasty, Jeremy Crone, Wolflink73, Snyder Schwein, Florida Jake, Stormy Knight, Nikita Martinoff, Benjamin Whiting, Ryan Devins, Hazev the Wolf, and Bryson. I appreciate you all so much. New memberships have slowed down a little bit, and obviously I'm not forcing anyone to do it, and this is just an extra thing for people that appreciate it, so I'm not mad about that at all, but it would be nice to see some new people. So if you appreciate the content, this is the best way to support me as a channel. All this money goes straight into my savings, so you're just helping me as a person and helping my future and doing a little bit extra if you appreciate the content a lot. Thank you so much.